I'm not real sure what one word would be that would be synonymous with him. The project is synonymous with his ideals and what he stood for. Our program was a medical education symposium designed to um, expose young black students or students from underrepresented communities to doctors. We've had over 20 or 25 uh, professionals here, including surgeons, dentists, doctors, uh, uh, pharmacists. So you're not going to have much of a social life in medical school. African Americans uh, in America are about 50% of the population, but we comprise only 4% roughly of physicians in the country. So we're very, very much underrepresented. I went to Mingary Medical College School of Dentistry where I got my dental degree. Because a lot of the doctors were young and they related real closely with some of the kids. A lot of times African Americans, they think that, oh, sports is the only way or music is the only way to go. But having black doctors shows people of color that you can succeed and you can go places. You don't just uh, one day walk through the door and you're in medical school. Well, this is just another way to open up the conversation and let them know that being a doctor, being a dentist, being a pharmacist, these are all uh, career options that they may or may not be looking into that they probably should look into. Your medical career is a significant financial investment. The studies have proven that minority doctors are more likely to practice in underrepresented communities. I think he'd be proud to see the numbers of black medical professionals that were here. There's people who came from the same backgrounds, people who came from the same communities that are doing these uh, types of careers and that is definitely a possibility for them as well. A ring symbolizes an echo that not only it goes beyond the point of origin and expands. And it doesn't matter what life throws at you, you are mature. It's called the I Am Me Retreat. We have 100 girls come out. We teach them different skills to help empower them and mature them. My first year, like, when I came, I was really, like, iffy about it because you know, I'm not the type of person who opens up. I was in a room, it was like our first session, and we started talking about bullying and stuff and how we, everybody goes through issues and then we all just were like bust out crying. And that's when I realized like I had so much pain that I had to release that I was just suppressing and it was like eating me up a lot. I really did realize that there are people I could talk to even though for a long time I felt like there was nobody in the world I could talk to. These girls go through a lot. Some of them are suicidal, some of them are cutting, some of them are um, foster kids or um, depressed. And the hardest part about being here is telling your story because it makes you vulnerable and nobody likes to be vulnerable. When I started to realize that a lot of girls here go through the same thing I do. Some of these girls, they're silent or very shy and timid when they first arrive here. But when they leave here, they know they have a voice and they can, take, they can go home and tell their parents what's happening and what's going on. So if they need help, they can get it. Because when you come, you're like, I ain't want to be here. When I came back from my second retreat, I really started absorbing what they were saying, and I really started putting it into a process in my life. Um, and so I started to forgive people who, like, I forgave my birth mom for abandoning me, and I forgave my aunt for, you know, treating people better than me or, you know, not being there for me in my life. Dr. King, he spoke very often about people speaking out against injustice and making your voice matters absolutely supports that. You have to be able to recognize that you have a voice, you, it matters, and you have to actually use that voice. If I want to be a lawyer and I'm going to have to step up to the plate, you know, when I'm in the courtroom or when I'm dealing with clientele or dealing with other lawyers. So getting that leadership here and that mentorship here, I'll be able to take that to the outside world so I can become who I want to be, so I can thrive like I want to, so I can be successful. And then come back and help. And he would say that this retreat is offering a light into those dark places. It's allowing girls to be able to shine um, and know that they're not alone. Sometimes when you're homeless, it's not by choice. Something happened to you as an individual to cause you to be homeless. We just want to reach out and lift them up and to get them back on their feet. We have community service partners that are provide an array of social services. We have the State of Florida Department of Veteran Affairs. In 2013, when I retired, I asked the Lord to give me something how I can help my community. 
and he gave me the homeless event. Which meant that 1.4 million individuals are eligible to vote. Our focus this year is on felons right and we partnered with Hillsborough County Supervisor of Elections Office, the Public Defender's Office, and the State Attorney's Office, as well as the ACLU, to make sure that the restorations of rights were restored to many homeless veterans and other low and moderate income persons. There was 10,000 people that had applications with the clemency board to get their rights restored. In the beginning, I didn't understand the importance of it until I uh, did some past history search and realized how hard the people struggle for us to vote. So one day I got this letter in the mail and they was like, you are able to get your votes, your voting rights restored. All you have to do is fill this paperwork out. And it had been like 12, 13 years had went by. And I filled the paper out and all of a sudden they sent my voter registration card in the mail and I was able to vote. I didn't understand the importance of it until I actually seen what it really does. And one vote counts. What's the impact of arrest, prosecution, conviction on you? When everyone has the opportunity to vote, you make a difference in your local community, city, state, and uh, county that you live in. Because if you notice in Florida, uh, things are always very, very close. Dr. King would be very elated to see the number of people that were here today. We are living the legacy of Dr. King by providing services to others. It's all about accepting people for who they are. Not looking at the race, not looking at where they came from. So we've asked three high schools Spoto High School, Riverview High School, and Kids Community College High School to do a canned food drive. And all of our cans are behind me, and we have probably over a thousand cans of food that we're going to give out tomorrow to 75 residents. I did it with teens and youth because they need to understand who Martin Luther King was and what he stood for. It's important for us to continue to teach his legacy to the young generation because they are our future and they need to know that there was some struggle to get to this point. I'm a student representative of Riverview High School and I was in charge of getting volunteers and cans delivered from our school to this event. We are crossing the boundaries of what Martin Luther King lived for. He lived for diversity and we are making that diversity happen. Delivering such things like this will be able to give many families food on the table and they won't have to worry about if they need to buy some more food or anything. So like this is helping them give them that peace of mind. They know that this food is to serve a community, a community that they've never met before, but yet they're here volunteering. And I think if he was here today, he would say, great job, keep the good work, we want to continue moving forward. Some of the kids might be teased if they go around sharing that they love to paint or sketch, but definitely having the courage to say, I'm gonna do this differently. We have two of our artists here today that are actually facilitating a painting, kind of like tribute to Dr. King painting. One's doing it for children, the other's doing it with the parents. We felt that this population probably didn't have a lot of opportunity to go out and use therapeutic stress relief type of um, strategies like paintings. Eight of the teachers here at Young Middle Magnet School facilitated lessons related to um, courage, related to learning from Dr. King and then finding alternate ways to deal with stress, anger, violence. So the students actually had an opportunity to, to just feel important. And I love that part about the courage part because they had courage to just speak out and create a new thing. These were original poems, original skits, original songs, original raps. And now they're participating in the final task 
Right now, the children are actually getting an opportunity to paint. Today's kids face a lot of bullying and there's often bad examples being set by some of the children in the school. And so we just wanted to give them an alternative way to deal with those issues. So the anger that you feel when you're upset an adult or a teacher or a classmate or another student who's being disrespectful, how can we channel that and put that into something positive like a poem? Or how can you sketch a picture? Or how can you use color pencils or paint to kind of therapeutically work through and reflect on your emotions. They taught us about courage, and courage is not only being, um, having to do something dangerous, but doing something that helps you stand up for someone. We'll just set that back up. I think that Dr. King would be very proud, especially because he would see what's going on in our community. Well, he stood up for what he believed in, and he went and did marches while they were spraying people down and he didn't care, he kept going for what he believed in. They knew without a doubt that this lesson was imperative to the changes that they need to make in their generation. As you notice, leadership is something we are lacking and the development of leaders in our community has been important. These giants remind us of Dr. King's legacy. This was started long before many of the Martin Luther King events. And it started at 645 because during that time the King holiday was not a holiday. So we started at 645 in order to get people out and go to work. There's a commitment involved with getting up and being here early in the morning. What is today's equivalent of the lunch counter sittings, the bus boycotts, and the freedom rides? 50 years ago, education used to be the number one funding priority in states across this country, and prisons were the last. Now, it is completely reversed. So we hope to inspire, enlighten, and, and uh, have people motivated to go out and, and put in a day of service. This breakfast also proves the reality of King City. We have people here from all walks of life. This is what King wanted for us. The movement was diverse. You had uh, whites and blacks. You had uh, you know, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics that were all a part of the movement. And what better way to serve Dr. King and his memory than to do everything in our power to make that dream of the beloved community a reality for us now and in the future. He would think that this is what we should be doing. We should be providing service to the community. We should be trying to have a brotherhood, a sisterhood type of day where all people, no matter their race, creed, color, you know, sexual orientation, can get together and unite behind the ideals of freedom and justice and equality for all. The main word is fearless because if you have fear, then you can't achieve your goals. You have to be fearless in all of your pursuits. This year is our fifth annual Youth Empowerment Workshop. It's you know what you got going on. You, you know what's inside of you. It's for middle and high school boys and girls between the ages of 13 and 18. We have a panel full of um, community leaders that um, impart wisdom in our students and all of our participants. Bullies don't exist unless you allow it to exist. We have a workshop sponsored by Suncoast Credit Union that's teaching them about uh, economic empowerment. We have one with Computer Mentors, Team Tech, and Kids, Kids Code that's teaching them about technology jobs and um, how to code and how to get into programs that can lead into future career choices. Don't work $100. Even though it's dirty and step on in our workshops, we not only empower them educationally and economically, but we also teach them about service and giving back to their community. And we're showing them through our volunteers and through our panelists how they can give back to the community. Dr. King would say, continue the fight and that continue to be fearless. This project is all about service. From the month-long uh, toiletry drive that we did leading up to the event, to the students coming out on their day off and serving, um, offering services free of charge, the food, the games, the fun. It's all about just serving the people in need. We're offering free haircuts, uh, manicures, toiletries, food, games, and fun for the residents here at Metropolitan Ministries.
the number one thing is when you look good, you feel good. So we're trying to empower them by having them walk away feeling even better about themselves than when they walked in, but ultimately also providing some essentials. The majority of the, the uh, barbers are actually students. So over at Blake High School, we have a barbering program. So they're third, fourth, and even graduates of the barbering program. So the guy who's on the, the first chair, uh, he was actually our president of the organization last year, our youth president. So this whole uh, thing was his idea. With our organization, service being one of our core values, we really always want to hone in on the homeless population. Actually, some of our students that have been in the pop or in our organization have been homeless at some point. So a lot of times when we sit down and we're swapping ideas, homelessness is always on the table. The students are actually really passionate about that. Because they know that they're not alone and there's other people out trying to help them. I just see everybody walking away with a happy smile. And I actually love giving back to the community. That's actually something that I want to do later on in life after teaching. I actually want to be like a motivational speaker and let them know my story. Dr. King would say that this is what the dream was about, right? Having people from different walks of life, different backgrounds, different colors coming together, serving one another. He would be very proud of us because he had a dream and we're fulfilling it. Like, he wanted the community to come together as one and that's something that we're volunteering to do. Dr. King, King's message of people cooperating together, working together to achieve common ends, regardless of their religious differences. It doesn't get stale. I mean, this is my 30th time. Let your peace emanate from Zion, because we have failed to bring it about on the face of your earth. There's a lot of division in our society. We represent many faiths this afternoon, and each of our survival stories break off at some point. An event like this is absolutely necessary to demonstrate that we can work together and that we really care about one another, because those aren't necessarily the messages that we've been getting from Washington. Let there be peace among the nations, peace in our land, peace in our community, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. We face a common enemy. That enemy is not man, but discrimination, dictatorship, greed, hatreds, and violence, which lie within the heart of men. The idea is to bring the community together so that people from all different ethnic backgrounds and religious backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, can share their history with one another we learn from one another and we respect one another. We're creating community, the feeling that together we can make this place a better place to live. If everybody that has ever told me they marched with Dr. King had really marched with Dr. King, we wouldn't be in the mess we in right now. I think he would love this. I mean, this is in the spirit of, of uh, his whole ministry. The idea is people can work together regardless of the differences that they have that proves that we can get along. And that's the, that's the message, peace and harmony and justice for one another. Respect. Serve to the people. Today, as a church, Iglesia La Verdad, uh, we focus and serve to the people. Ya no vivo yo, Cristo vive en mí, pero quiero ser. This is a, a, a very a small church, but it's a very loving church. It's mixed. You got folks from uh, Mexico, you got folks from uh, South America, you got folks like me that I was born in Brooklyn, New York. In 1963, he led a coalition of numerous civil rights groups. We're going to give out uh, uh, food boxes, a little more than 50 families. They're gonna come in here. All these days we was uh, prepared like, uh, like a clothing uh, drive that we're gonna do today. And uh, we have a people that they're gonna be attending. Whoever needs uh, clothes, they, we also have some shoes. We have, we have several things. They're gonna see that somebody uh, care about, about them. Uh, I, th I think they're gonna be a big impact. We just love the community. I think this church uh, does a lot for the community, and this is just one of the aspects of the things that we do in a community. I think he will be very proud of, of us that we are continuing and doing what he has in his heart. It's because of his sacrifices that I'm able to stand here before you 
as a police officer of all things. That's what Martin Luther King would want, is people that are in leadership positions to be servant leaders. Through HCC and the students starting right now, we're coming together, um, despite our differences in backgrounds, to make sure that this community is beautiful. It's basically like a group home for homeless children, college kids, high school kids. We're coming together to kind of volunteer, come together and clean up the area for the students that live here and are also a part of our college. There we go, guys. MLK Dream was for everybody of all colors to work together and have freedom and equality for all. This is whites, blacks, Hispanics, Middle Eastern people, and we're all working together to get the job done. Our house can hold up to 40 students, and so we want to make sure that this feels like home. And through our MLK service project, we're able to build a garden, and so when they walk outside, they have the opportunity to see, like, before you step through those doors, that this is home, it's beautiful. We're a small nonprofit. It's very hard for us to get funds. All of our funding is through community support. And they just needed some renovation inside, like painting and landscaping. They had me over here planting plants. Never did it before, but it's really cool. We're digging up roots, putting in new plants, making the area look all pretty and nice. Like little discrepancies, like little spots that, like mold spots, you know, you remove a painting from a wall, it's like a spot that hasn't been painted yet. I think it really adds a lot of, uh, a, a bigger sense of community and a more pride in our home um, to, to be the ones putting in the work to like making it look better, making it look presentable, showing our neighbors that we are like Changing the stigma that we're not just a bunch of homeless kids who just run around the streets all the time, you know? Like, we're actually, like, we care about our space, we care about our futures, and we're showing that, that everybody that we care by putting in the work ourselves to make our home look beautiful. Without this, some of them quite literally would not have homes to go to. And I would probably still be, like, either at my mom's house or at my grandmother's house, um, definitely working some, probably not a very good job, um, probably trying to get myself through HCC. It starts with us you know, giving back and contributing. So once somebody see us give back, you know, they want to give back also. I feel like he would be like, just be proud of the contribution of us black and, you know, white and everybody coming together. If his dream was for every child to have a chance, he would know that that was happening here at Starting Right Now. No matter their background, no matter the obstacles they were dealt, um, they get a chance to live out their dreams. And, their dreams. and I believe that's synonymous with what King wanted to do. I mean, I think our dream comes true by just being able to read. Antoine has a never-ending list of things he wants to buy. We've invited our community out to be able to share on our Dream Big, Let's Read campaign. Our church sits in a community with failing schools because our children aren't reading. As soon as Antoine got out the door and around the corner, every kid has a game board or DST or whatever they have that they're forgot about reading. When I was growing up, it was like a huge thing to go to the library to read. Like your mom was reading, your grandmother was reading, and we've just gotten away from it. If you can't read, you can't do math, you can't do social science, and then we start to have behaviors because I can't read, so now I got to just shy away or push away because I'm not able to do it. Absolutely thrilled with the knowledge that he had gained. It gives us an opportunity to share in our community and promote reading to enhance the literacy in our students that are in our community. We felt as though if we made reading fun, let the um, community know that we are behind our children. Money don't grow on trees. What do you think I am, an ATM machine? We got the opportunity to share in financial literacy for they can learn to save, the kids get opportunity to share in the community, see that there are those that love them and support them in their reading. I think that them reading and them learning to read is extremely important. So we take this opportunity to share and promote it because we want to let them know that reading is cool. The book box that we have that's set up, it allow us to put about 15 to 25 books inside of it. It gives us the opportunity, again, to put those book boxes in communities that will give the ability for those children to go out and, and grab or grab hold to a book or their parent to take them to, to a book. We have two locations now in the city of Tampa. I believe that he was a man that was full of education and he promoted education. His dream in itself is promoted by learning. And if you learn, and we understand that learning first starts with your ability to read. Everyone here, when they look at the garden, they say beautiful. And I believe what he stood for was beauty. He was adding beauty and freedom and love to our lives. 
We're building a butterfly garden at a nursing home, and we're trying to attract the monarch butterfly. The name of the garden is the Royal Butterfly Garden, the Magnificent Me Royal Butterfly Garden. We knew nothing about starting a butterfly garden, but all the help came. We got architects to design it, take that vision, design it, build it. And so I got my confirmation that this is the Royal Butterfly Garden, not just because we're attracting monarch butterflies, but for the people that are here. You are all royalty, you're special, and we love you. And I want to make that exchange to um, between the residents, the butterflies, and the children, those intergenerational transfers. We'll see it grow up, and it'll be a place where people can come, they can pray, they can relax, they can have a sense of the, uh, just the goodness of God. He tried to reach the underserved and the forgotten community. Thank all the veterans here for their service. We want to reach in and remember those who even fought for us. There are veterans here that fought for us. And we want to remember those and not, never forget them and know that they are loved. They are still free. They're still flying like butterflies. I think he would be very proud to know that freedom rings on. And through the life cycle of a butterfly, we see that freedom, people have an image of freedom and new life. He oftentimes talked about this great country called America that has a vault of opportunity. So today I think we're showing kids this vault and unlocking it for them and letting them peek inside to see that they can achieve and become anything that they want. Yeah. Today we're here celebrating Suit Up and Show Up. We're on our sixth year of this event. And the event really is about helping our kids understand that the community cares about them, that they will wrap their arms around them. So the suit represents an investment. The suits have been donated from all from people from all walks of life so that the kids really know that the community is coming out to make sure they can have a suit. And it's not only a suit, it's a shirt, it's a tie, it's socks, it's shoes, it's a full wardrobe that they're able to get today. So it makes me feel like I'm grown. I feel like an overachiever, I can accomplish anything in life. They're opening up my mind, they're giving me more of a visual look of how I could achieve and do what I want in life. Probably half of them have probably never owned a suit in their life. Um, many of them don't know how to even tie a tie. Today, going through a partnership where they have young men um, as mentors, presenting them with a suit, tailors, taking their measurements, things that they may have never experienced before. I had mothers who talked about kids who've gone through this program and they changed the way that they respond in school, um, making better grades, behavior problems going away. Um, it's just a transformative moment. Does that feel comfortable? I think he'll be moved himself to see us minorities coming up, dressing up in suits to how the men are today. It's, it's really, really great. He talked about his son and his daughter growing up in a community, holding hands with other folks. He was talking about economic development and the ability to achieve greatness. So we like for her to be able to come in and feel good uh, about uh, what, it is, uh, what it is that we've done. This is our home uh, energy makeover initiative, or HEMI. The object is, is to make this, uh, this client's home more energy efficient. Uh, we put in about two doors uh, that were very, very leaky. We did some wall repair. We did some things that focused on the ventilation system in the home. We also are replacing some uh, brand new uh, energy efficient windows. So by the time we're done, uh, not only will the, the house look better, uh, as you can kind of see, we're doing some work there in the back, some yard work, but it'll also, the customer will be saving some money as well. We've uh, uh, loaded trash by the road. Uh, we're doing some uh, rearranging our patio furniture. We're doing some landscaping, doing some painting. Uh, kind of just really just trying to make the, the, the place stand out uh, in this particular community. If you look at our team, uh, it's diversity. And we have uh, the, the melting pot, if you will. We have uh, black volunteers, white volunteers, Hispanic volunteers, Indian volunteers. 
Uh, and it's everybody really working together for a common goal. And uh, one of the reasons why we got all of this signage out is because we want to be able to highlight uh, what it is that we're doing and why we're doing it. So when they see this, uh, the MLK Day of Service signs up and down this road and they see these banners and the flyers, they'll, they'll understand that uh, what we're doing is making the dream work. This is a two-day project for us. But uh, in all actuality, the project is going to be for a lifetime. He would say, keep up the good work. And, and it's still more work to do. You know? This church is called Love First Christian Center. And one thing about Dr. King, he always said to love your enemies. Love is the only force that can turn an enemy into a friend. We do outreach. What Jesus did, he fed people. And I think Dr. King wanted to feed people spiritually and naturally. And today what we do is we feed a couple hundred people. Uh, we buy bags, buy bags of food, pack the bags, stack the bags, and we just give it away. Our outreach is to feed the hungry. Our outreach is for the church, but also for the community. The reason why I think this project is important is food is an essential need. And the way our world is going, and it's actually currently as we speak, uh, with the government shutdown, we have members who are not being paid. And some of them actually need the food. The project and the money and all these things came together at the same time because you never know who needs help. This outreach is usually on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, uh, we feed people and from all over the community, they come in and grab bags of food. I had a lady write a letter stating that for the last six months, she lived off of our food pantry. And to me, that warms my heart because at the end of the day, if you can't eat, uh, I think that's one of those essential needs and by God's grace, we have the ability to provide that. We appreciate the unity. What I love about what's happening here today, everyone's a volunteer. Uh, everyone's serving from their heart. It's a Tuesday morning, and we have people here serving together. What also I like about it is those who receive the food come from every race and every background. It's about unity. Through education, our kids can, they can climb mountains. They become, they could be anything they want to be if they put their minds to it. And we want you to hear about the things that he talked about on that great day. Our theme today is reading to achieve the dream. They could read. So um, we know that reading is the key to our children's future. So we're here to let them know what Martin Luther King did. And through reading, they will attain their goals. Our students are kindergarten, which is 5 to 11 years old. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty. Today, our children will learn about the great things that Martin Luther King has done. We want our kids not only to hear about Martin Luther King's name, we want them to know most everything that he did, all that they can learn today. We want to talk about justice equality, and equality for all. They are going to read books. They're going to actually hear Martin Luther King's voice for the first time for many of them. The life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. We've always told them that Martin Luther King was a great speaker. He's very eloquent. The word that he used, I think they will really, really be impacted by actually hearing him today and just listen to him, and I think they're gonna get a real good feel about what we mean, about how great the man is. I think he would be just delighted to know that we are putting, pushing forth his dream so that our kids would know all that he wanted everybody to know about equality and justice, learning and education, knowledge and equality. He would just be delighted and happy to know that we are still drum majors for justice because of him. Probably the courage that the children have and that they can go forward knowing that they have a place in our um, society. Nothing stopped him. People bombed his house and threatened to harm him, him and his family, but he did not stop. What we're doing is a uh, essay contest for the third graders um, for Dr. Martin Luther King. The black garbage companies went on strike in Memphis, Tennessee because they weren't getting the same pay as the white the third graders have researched Dr. King and his history and his legacy and then have presented um, their essay to their class and then out of the class um, the teachers chose two students to move on to today's session. 
Martin Luther King Jr. was a very brave man. He was put in jail more than five times. We do this program at three of the schools, elementary schools that we partner with through the school year. All African Americans stopped riding their buses in for 381 days because they didn't have changed the law yet. They learn a doc about Dr. Martin Luther King and they get a, a sense of what he did for our country. The main impact is what they present. It was just totally amazing. It, I did not expect them to come up with what they did. So I think that once you do something like that and you present it um, orally, I think it kind of registers in your mind. I am so thankful that Martin was persistent and led others to change their thinking because now I live in a more equal world today, unsegregated. I think he would be very proud of the kids and um, of the mission that we do. Regardless of where your place in life, you can always do something for someone else. And especially on a day remembering someone who sacrificed so much and served his community. It's a, a new kind of flavor of what we've been doing the last four years. What we focused on is hunger. This year we're actually partnering with the Trinity Cafe. We come together and we bag up meals and food for people in need homeless as well as children. For the, the people who are getting the meals, they can leave with that. But then they're still in need of toothpaste, soap, socks, simple things. For their families that come in there, the people that are not necessarily homeless, but have to make a decision between paying for their, their rent or paying for food. We actually had, I believe, over 100 participants volunteering, putting together two, over 200 bags and then we disperse those bags at the two Trinity cafes that are located here in Tampa. We've been doing this for about four years. We, we really never educated our youth auxiliaries of why, but we actually spent a, an hour talking with them about what hunger, what homelessness is, what poverty is, and making them recognize it's not just the people you see on the street. It could be one of your classmates that we'd be helping. And that's one of the reasons why we picked hunger, because it's a little bit away from the diversity and the the march you know, on Selma and things like that. And it's about some of the holistic things that Martin Luther King talked about. I think he would be happy that we were present of a mind enough to listen to his whole message. So we did things on Martin Luther King Day, but we normally did the march. And we didn't necessarily volunteer all the time. This has caused us to have, no matter what, every year we are volunteering and we have the whole, what we call the blue and white family. And it's just a blessing that we've been able to participate. equality, opportunity, opportunity for home ownership for people who are economically challenged. We decided to team up with Habitat for Humanities. We wanted to go into their restores and try to help accept donated items that the community sends and also help construct the building. We decided to team up with them to do some construction and work in the ReStore where they can get the furnishings for this house. Everybody should have an opportunity to, to own a home. Even if they not ac economically able to, there's an organization out there that can help them with resources to get a home built and get furnishings and everything. It's helping because of Habitat for Humanity last year did 14 did 14 houses. I think Dr. King would say that Habitat for Humanity really helps economically challenged families or veterans who need housing. Dr. King thought that everyone should be equals, even with equal housing. So Habitat for Humanity is really helping people in that area. The people who own the homes volunteer at Habitat for Humanity, they give back. In return, they get an opportunity for home ownership. That was one of Dr. Martin Luther King's key thing was equality, equality for everybody, even in housing. A wise investment in our kids is a wise decision for mankind. This is our second year doing the Move It to Lose It. In order for our children to be able to function 
as healthy children, they have to be educated. This is an activity extravaganza that we put together with the, the attempt to educate the parents, give them some different ideas of how they can feed their children. We are having cooking demonstrations to sort of show them how to prepare healthy food quickly and be able to make sure that their kids are getting the right nutrients and the right foods to make them less obese. It's important because our children are our future, and in order for them to function properly, they have to be healthy. And we believe that if you move it, you lose it. And they don't get enough exercise these days because they're in front of the TV, they're playing video games, they're doing things that are just basically unhealthy. So we want to tell them, you can move it to lose it, even if it's just a jump rope or it's a walk in the evening. We're investing in our kids, and I think that healthy kids are able to function emotionally, they're able to function educationally, they're just able to be better human beings if they're healthy. Good morning again, you all are doing so well for walk. So he would be, I guess, happy to know that we're doing something to support our children and, and make sure that their futures are long, because I think eating healthy adds longevity to life. When you take love off a sheet of paper and actually put it and make it move, that's what this event is, Love in Action. We are hosting this event along with um, Robles Elementary and a lot of community partners that came along and just said, yeah, I'll help. We had a grand opening this morning, Bethel AME Church, and the Greater Mount Carmel Church came together and they stocked the pantry with food and uniforms for the children of Robles Elementary. I personally believe that that's my purpose in life is to make sure that the needs of children are being met. Robles Elementary is a school that is a failing school at this time. By the time we, the partners and the churches come together and surround and support this school, I think there will be a great turnaround. We created a packet, and in the packet there were certain things that um, took place. They were giving a passport, and in that passport there were squares that they had to go to all of the vendors that are present, because each vendor had some connection to do with health. Whether it was a well check, or learning about um, how to eat properly, and after each vendor or each workshop, they had to get a stamp. With everyone going through the health fair and going through the sessions, the goal is that minds would change. Their, their perspective on food would change, their perspective on eating would change. Dr. Martin Luther King was all about love. He was about keeping, um, connecting families and people, no matter what their color or race was, connecting everybody together. He would back and support this event because we are demonstrating and putting love in action. We have seen visions for our communities come forth from other leaders, former leaders, present leaders, which is matching the dream that he has had. Thank God for the Church of Manifestation. I was hungry, but now I'm full. Our program is here volunteering at the Manifestations Empowerment House. We are a mentoring group meant to serve the betterment of young men, teach them things as they grow up and get older that they'll be able to use for the rest of their lives. Just fun, food, fellowship, and, and remembrance of what he has paid the way for. So you did. We're here uh, to support the community, to give back. I brought nine high school males. It's important to teach young people to give back to the community. Today, they're serving in the barbershop, giving haircuts. They're distributing groceries and non-perishable food items. They're giving away toiletries. My entire life, I've liked to help people. I like to see people smile and do what I can for other people. The fact that the community comes out because we have resources that we're able to give them, whether they're in need or not in need, it doesn't even matter to us. The fact that we're able to give to them to make their day better, to make their life better. Not only are we just helping people and giving out 
to others, we're giving to the minorities, the people that are impoverished and don't have many opportunities. Where we're starting to see uh, the children, uh, their self-esteem beginning to improve. We're starting to see collaboration. He would be standing here with a smile on his face as he saw all of the people that came because they were in need and all of the people that came to give back. He wouldn't say, I had a dream or I have a dream. I believe he would say, I am living a dream. We serve both the Latino population and both the African American population with this initiative. We actually provide them with uh, needed education. What we did was a safe baby, safe sleep initiative. We brought out parents, grandparents, and, uh, husbands, wives that have little infants and we kind of educate them on safe sleeping habits for infants just to kind of you know combat the SIDS for sudden infants uh, death syndrome. We did a lot of education. We also gave away um, about 35 uh, pack and play cribs for the uh, participants. And we also gave away uh, new infant uh, diapers as well. We also had the presentation done in both English and Spanish. There was a pre-assessment uh, before we did the presentation to kind of get a gauge their understanding of uh, safe sleeping habits. And then afterwards there was a, uh, a uh, post-assessment that actually kind of gauged how much they, other knowledge they took in from the presentation. As we all know, he was all about service and he wasn't st uh, stuck to one particular demographic. If he was there and he saw the turnout and, and the, uh, the, the service that we were providing to that community, everybody was kind of pleased with the initiative because we had a, a very good turnout. are empowering a whole generation of teenagers to go out and service their community. We had um, entertainers and speakers to come out and speak to the teens as well as the um, homeless and the community. We gave out hygiene packets, we gave out snack bags, we grilled and gave a hot meal. We had our clothing closet out. We offered a lot of resources and this year we actually even case managed a few of the people to make sure that we get the ball rolling to get them to a point of self-sufficiency. So where we put these boxes? We had free haircuts and free hairstyles for everyone. We had blankets, clothes, shoes. We had people um, in the corner talking about human rights and pamphlets, giving out pamphlets. It's all about service, and that's what he was all about. It was all about the service that he provided to the community, and so we want to mirror that. And not only do we want to mirror it as adults, we want to get the teens to mirror it, and so that each of us who begin to help each other, then if, if it goes from us to them, then it'll go from them to the community and then from them to their friends. Every year we have this onslaught of people or of teenagers that we have to literally turn away because we have too many teens signed up. I am always on the phone, I am always texting, I'm always playing video games. I don't turn up an opportunity to help those in need. I think he would tell me to keep doing what I'm doing because it's a peaceful way of helping. I think that he would say keep going, keep going, keep moving, you're headed in the right direction. He would want everyone to be, to have access to everything and have access to information regarding energy consumption and keeping our environment clean. Recycling sometimes isn't available where you live or your apartment complex may not have the option to offer recycling. Our um, event is based on environmental justice. A lot of them um, don't get a lot of information in school about keeping their environment clean and energy conservation. We get something, we reuse that same material and we make it into something new. We are trying to introduce them, first of all, to recycling, to uh, energy conservation, how to keep their communities clean, what they can do in their own communities to keep their environments clean. There's one temperature setting right now. No. And we have someone from Tico that came in to talk to them about electricity usage and how to reduce their electricity bill, uh, what they can do in their home to not to reduce uh, energy consumption. We also have, are teaching especially the children about uh, waste reduction and recycling and what they can do to not put so many things in the, in the world like in the ocean and how to um, not use plastic so much and how to find out and just learn about what ways they can um, take part in trying to keep the environment clean. The section in green 
is the good section. That's everything that we would like for you to put in your recycling bin. And then anything in the red, of course, that is a no. I believe that he's a champion for justice, which means that all of our people will have the same information. So it's not good if we have a certain community that knows all about energy consumption, that knows all about certain things, and then inner city people do not know. He would like for everyone to know, and everyone to be involved in keeping our communities clean and saving our planet. And I believe he'd be very proud to know that we are doing something a little bit different in an area that's not um, talked about so much. I have Palm Harbor United Methodist Church and I have Bayshore Baptist Church to do whatever they can to support this community. He made a speech called I Have a Dream speech. I thought about this particular community because they don't seem to have a lot of hope and focus. And I wanted to come to this community and just um, mingle with them and let them know that um, we, we're here and that we want to partner with them and that we want to bring this school along. It's going to be closed if the grades doesn't improve. When he got hit by a bully. We had an essay contest where we had 55 essay winners. I want to inspire them the way Dr. King inspired us. He wanted um, our children, black, white, um, to come together and he wanted the community to live in harmony and I feel that I bring that peace to the table and that's why I chose to do this for the community to just come together. I approach Feeding Tampa Bay and they're out here today distributing 400 food boxes to this community. I think that he would be very proud to see this community here this way and that he would um, support and come alongside us and do whatever he could to bring this community along. God is awesome and I feel honored to be a um, servant in this community. <laughs>